show. If this is your first time tuning in, you get a huge welcome. And if you are a returner, if you're already part of the party, you also get a huge welcome. I'm glad you are all tuned in. Whether you're watching on YouTube at the Adrian Ross Show or listening at my Substack, adrianross.substack.com or on a podcast platform, I'm very glad you're tuned in. And guess what? Guess what? Next episode will be the 100th episode of the Adrian Ross Show. And I am excited about that. 100 to me is a huge thing. You know, a lot of people start things and they peter out just a few weeks in. You know, they'll start a podcast and they peter out. But it's been consistent. The only time you have not seen me at least once a week was when I was out because I had surgery. And I believe it was six weeks, six to eight weeks I did not do uh, an episode, but other than that, it's been it's been us. It's been us together talking about things that matter. Sometimes talking about things that are just fun. But I'm really excited uh, that this will be the 100th episode the next time. And I'm working on something special. I really hope to have a special show for you, as if every show is not special, right? Every show special, of course. But I hope to have something extra special I'm working on. So wonderful. Now, I also want to do some other housekeeping. I ask for your support. Again, those of you who are already supporting, already uh, already subscribed to my Substack, thank you so much. I need the support. I appreciate the support. But those of you who have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Go to adrianross.substack.com. There are various subscription options and I would appreciate that support so that I could um, I can go deeper in what I want to do. I have a vision for where I want to take this and I can't do it without you. We do this thing together. So, um, so consider doing that, please. And then after you consider, just go ahead and do it. Sometimes we spend too much time considering doing something. Just do it. So yeah, that's cool. Also on on the podcast platforms and on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, uh, like, share, comment, all those things really do matter, okay? All right, so today I actually later on have a segment with someone you met, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago on the show. She is the co-founder of African-American Conservatives. And so we talked together um, a couple of weeks ago about some of the race baiting that we see going on and in particular with the view and so she's going to step in a little bit later and uh and you'll get to hear more from her because we've got an update on that but for right now right now i i want to talk to some passionate engaged involved people in the political arena okay i i just want to give you some some sound advice. And I'm going to use my experience uh, as, a, as a way for you to understand exactly what I'm talking about. Now, Donald Trump, former President Donald Trump, has some ardent supporters. I love former President Trump, okay? He's not without flaws. No one is, okay? I've made that clear, but I've also supported him, all right? And I, that does not mean, if you know me, you know, that does not mean that I am not going to be honest. I'm not, that does not mean that I'm not going to be fair. It does not mean that when criticism is warranted, that I'm not going to criticize, okay? Because I don't worship the man, all right? And I want to be fair and I'm not going to be a hypocrite, all right? Okay, so the same thing with uh, Governor Ron DeSantis. I like Governor Ron DeSantis. He hasn't won my vote. I mean, we're just early in this thing. Um, and he's not, uh, he's not leading by any stretch of the imagination in the polls, uh, nor is anyone who jumped into this 2024 race, uh, any GOP uh, individual, okay? Donald Trump is by far leading in the polls, like majorly, okay? But I do respect Governor Ron DeSantis. I respect what he's done in Florida. I respect that he was willing to stand up 
when other people were not standing up. He was on the right side of right, as I like to say, particularly where um, the coronavirus was concerned, where opening up his state was concerned. He really took a stand. And there were a lot of people, let's be honest, honest, who loved Ron DeSantis. But then he got in the race. Trump began to criticize him, began to call him, you know, Ron DeSanctimonious or Rob, as he sometimes calls him. And um, and then all of a sudden people hated Ron DeSantis and he's a horrible human being and all that other stuff. See, I can't I can't get with that. Honestly, I can't get with that. And this is what I want to talk about today. I write, as you know, on my Substack, and I did a couple articles. And one of the articles was about Ron DeSantis. I I came down a little bit on Ron DeSantis because I didn't think it was wise and, and I thought it might speak to some issues later that he snapped at a reporter who asked a question. The reporter asked why he did not take questions from voters. And DeSantis got ticked off because at that time he was actually engaging in the crowd with supporters. And so he was being interrupted to ask, well, why aren't you taking, why didn't you take questions? The reporter who uh, who is um, an Associated Press reporter was referring to earlier at, uh, during the speaking portion, he was referring to that. DeSantis got ticked off and turned to him and said, are you blind? Are you blind? You know, basically, don't you see I'm taking questions right now? That was not what the AP reporter meant, but DeSantis really got ticked off. Now, as I wrote, I am totally, totally not sympathetic to the media, okay? And so I'm not here to defend the media. I don't have a problem with letting the media have it, particularly the mainstream media who love to come at conservatives. So I'm, I'm not, I don't have a problem with, with that. And I'm certainly not a DeSantis hater, but I will give criticism where I feel it needs to be. And I feel that this early in the campaign, this are you blind thing, first of all, I don't like that, I, that comment, are you blind thing, but he just got so bent out of shape for what really was a fair question in my mind. And why do I say that's a fair question? Well, Ron DeSantis launched his campaign via audio, on the disaster, the whole Twitter thing, um, if you consider that a disaster, which many people do, but anyway. So, and after that, he took questions and people on the left and the right have criticized the rollout. And I've heard it said that he received softball questions. So his question answering abilities um, are already in question. His personality has been in question. And so I thought it was a fair question. Why didn't you take questions? Again, particularly after you received these softball questions and people are wondering if you can answer the hard questions. Um, and people are also wondering about your personality. Now, we know that DeSantis can answer questions. We've seen him before he, he answered the race in, in press conferences and, and all of that. But still, I think it was a fair question. And my thought was, man, if you are this bent out of shape this early, this was his first stop in New Hampshire, it's early in the campaign, and you get, you know, are you blind? Are you blind? And you're offended by that question. Now, what is, what's going to happen when the real tough stuff comes? I mean, and I said in my column that I wrote, I said, you know what? You haven't gotten the Trump treatment yet. You haven't gotten the Palin 2008 treatment yet from the media. So you should be really cool. You know what? You know, keep your powder dry and save some of that for, for later. That's it's really it just, just seemed like it was like, man, are you going to be able to are you going to be able to handle this? This is too early for you to get all ticked off. So I gave that advice and I and I said that, you know what? There are people who don't like Trump's rough personality, okay? I'm not into the, I mean, let me rephrase that. I was about to say, I'm not into the personality thing. I'll rephrase that and just say, I'm not into making my decision for the person I will vote for based on, 
personality. You know, the people who were willing to sell the country down the river because Trump sent out mean tweets. I'm not, I'm not down with that. But, you know, so again, I'm not into the personality thing in terms of that, but there are people who are, and there are people who feel that Trump's personality is too much for them. So my advice to Ron DeSantis was, there are people who don't feel there's room in this race for another Trump personality. They're actually looking for an alternative to that personality. And might that be you, DeSantis? So it was a mild criticism. Um, and again, I'm, I don't have, I'm not trying to do the media any favors. I just, I just feel like you kind of got to keep your powder dry. And that was really kind of a small thing for you to get that bent out of shape over. And so I wrote about it. That's what I do, okay? Whether I like DeSantis or not, I still am not, I don't worship him, just like I don't worship Trump. So if you're expecting Adrian Ross to hold back uh, or not say something or not write something because you like Ron DeSantis, you, you can save that for somebody else because I'm not bought and sold that way, okay? And Trump, I wrote a column about Donald Trump coming out hard against his former press secretary, Kaylee McEnany, as did many people who were truly baffled. Now, apparently on Fox News, McEnany, according to Trump, got a poll wrong, a poll number wrong. There, she, she mentioned that he had a certain amount of support, which was nine points less than what I guess Trump felt was right. And he took to true social and he blasted her, okay? He blasted her. And I'm not gonna go through every everything that he said, but I mean, he basically was like, the globalist can have her. He just, it was like, it was mind boggling. She's been loyal to him. She has defended him. And really all she did was quote the poll. She still said that, that Trump was well ahead of anybody, including DeSantis. Um, and, you know, I mean, she just she just quoted the poll and she said Ron DeSantis's camp will say that he's closing the gap, et cetera. She was just saying what they would say. And then he came on there and, and acted like she knew that she was wrong, but she did it anyway. And it was just it was it was just ugly, I thought. And so. Again, there are people who cannot support someone without also being able to accept criticism of someone. Do I think that, you know, I'm not gonna vote for Donald Trump if I were gonna vote for him. Uh, and I, I'm not gonna vote for him because he did that. No, that's probably not what I'm gonna do because I'm gonna look at, at, at the bigger picture. Do I like that he attacked her like that? No, it seemed extremely small and I wrote, that he should apologize to her. And I said publicly, he should apologize. Um, it's the right thing to do both morally and politically because although I, you know, it may not influence my vote, I have heard from people who have said, believe it or not, that that's enough to make them not vote for him because it's yet another thing that one person called childish and other people were just like, wow, that's kind of disloyal. And, um, so I know that there are people who feel that way. And then there's a, a legislator in New Hampshire. We know how important New Hampshire is, right? The first in the nation primary. And he was backing uh, Trump. And that, he said, has changed his mind. And now he's backing DeSantis. So um, the, the, the hardcore supporters, you know, the people who are looking at a bigger picture, it's not going to influence their vote, perhaps. But there are people whose votes are influenced. So uh, politically, I think the right move would be to say, you know what, I jumped the gun and to do it publicly. And, um, and, and you know, I don't know if Trump's ego will allow him to do that. I imagine, I hope that people, you know, who he listens to have said, you know, man, that was kind of over the top. I'm not, you know, I don't know if they did and he just uh, won't listen, but I don't know. There are a lot of things we don't know, but that was my criticism of him. Doesn't mean I don't think he should be president. Doesn't mean I throw him under the bus, you know, but I don't worship him, okay? And, and, and I so I've had some communication because obviously when I write, it goes out on social media. I shared 
um, uh, snippets and things like that. And so there are people who didn't like what I had to say. Now, I'm not talking about everyone. I had some good conversations with some people who disagree with me or had, you know, had something to say about it. And it was respectful and all that. And I love that. I love that exchange, but not everyone is like that. Like some people really like totally lose their minds. They are so, I was going to use the term, I'm not going to use it, but they are so in, enamored with Trump that, or with the census, either way, that if you criticize, it rubs them the wrong way and they're going to let you know. So I'm going to, I want to share this for you. You can, you can see it actually right now on the screen. Believe it or not, someone, someone commented on, on this, on this post in which I wrote that people are looking for not more of Trump, some people are not looking for more of Trump's personality. They're looking for an alternative to Trump's personality. It was that particular post, okay, when I was criticizing DeSantis. But I get this comment. I'm not sure if this person is a Trump supporter or a DeSantis supporter. I, I can't tell. I, I can't tell if they're ticked off because I was saying that DeSantis shouldn't have uh, barked at the reporter or if they didn't like that I said that some people are looking for an alternative to Trump. I'm not sure. What I do know is they basically said, they didn't basically, they did say F you, okay? And I won't say, it. They, they didn't say F, they actually said it. You can see it right there. So this, this individual writes F you if you don't like it. And I'm like, well, I don't know, again, if, if it's because of what I said about DeSantis not barking or he should not have barked, or if it's what I said about Trump, um, people looking for an alternative to his personality. I don't know. All I know is that this is, this is exhibit A of where we are in this country, that people are, they're, they're so consumed with people that they can't think straight. There should be not one person who cannot look at it and say, yeah, you know, Trump, maybe he shouldn't have said that to, not maybe, I mean, come on. He shouldn't have said that to Kaylee McEnany if he, after everything she's done for him and, and, and the situation did not call for. I put the video in my column at adrianross.substack.com. Okay, you can go and subscribe. It's a, it's a subscriber only uh, article. Go and subscribe, check that out. And I, I put what she said, it did not merit what his response was at all. I can love Donald Trump and still say that. And I'm suspect of people who cannot do that. They, they concern me, okay? They concern me because no one is perfect. And Donald Trump is capable of having made the wrong move here, jump the gun here. OK, it doesn't mean that that you have turned on him or anything. It means that you can think straight. And the same thing with DeSantis. DeSantis barking at the reporter. A lot of people are like, whatever, give it to the reporters. And I'm, I'm usually with that. You know, my whole point was this is early and you got that been out of shape this early with a question about you taking questions from voters. Seems like you should save some of that. OK really was really was an, really was not an unfair question so that was my advice to DeSantis so whether this person was ticked off for one or the other comments I made here's the thing part of what I do is write and assess and give my opinion and I am not going to be married to someone to the point that I cannot be real it would have been hypocritical for me to criticize, I feel, DeSantis, and then not criticize Donald Trump just because right now he's my guy. Donald Trump is my guy in this race right now. Most people are still getting in, getting in, whatever. But I believe Donald Trump did a great job for the country. I believe, and I believe he can do a great job again. Okay. So, you know, he, he's my guy at this point. But, um, you know, other people are still getting in. But, yeah, I, I love Trump. I love the fire. I'm, I'm a native New Yorker. He's got that New York fire. He's a New York fighter. I get it. But to go after Kaylee McEnany, you know, I can say I don't think that's a that was a good idea. I can say that.
you know, and I could say my advice is that you should you apologize and that you should apologize publicly. He could have criticized her, as I heard someone say. He could have sent her a text. He could have, but to go and blast her like that was kind of kind of low, right? Yeah. And then because he did it, though, I also think that he should what he should apologize publicly. You know, years ago, it was my first year teaching. You know, my first year teaching, and I went off on the student. I've shared this story before. You may have heard it. I don't know. I went off on this student. And, you know, after I did, I mean, it was, it was so, I don't know what the student did. I don't even remember what the student did, but whatever it did, it really was, maybe it was inappropriate. I don't know, but I went off and it was like, everybody was like, you know, sometimes when the teacher goes off, kids laugh and stuff like that. Well, nobody was, <laughs> nobody was laughing. It was like, and immediately I know the Lord was like, he convicted me. And I was like, man, and I knew I had to apologize. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to speak to this student after class and I'm going to say, I'm sorry. And just as I had that thought, it was like the spirit said, no, the Holy Spirit said, no, you embarrass this child in front of everybody. You will apologize in front of everybody. And I remember it was quiet and time went by, time went by. But before that class ended, I called the student by name. I don't even remember who the student was. Called the student by name. I'm like, let's just say John Doe. I'm like, John and looks up. Yes. And I said, I'm sorry that every time I say this, I kind of get choked up. Right. But I'm like, I'm like, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have spoken to you like that. I'm like, will you forgive me? And he was like, you could just see it was just like, yeah, because you know what? People aren't used to people doing that. It's the right thing to do. It's the humble thing to do, you know, and I have, that's not the only time in my teaching career that I've had to apologize. I've said that to kids before. I'm like, I'm sorry. It's like, I'm human. I made a mistake, you know, and, and, I've, and I've done that. And it goes a long way. And there are people who would like to see some more humility in Trump and they haven't seen it, they feel. And I just think morally, it's the right thing. And politically, it's the right thing. But regardless, whatever the situation is, can we be people who look at things, not just through the lens of that's my God, that's my, if it's a woman, that's my girl, you know, whatever, but look at what's right, look at what's true and look at the assess. That's why we have brains. And sometimes we praise people because they deserve it. And there's so many reasons to praise people, including Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis. But if there's something to criticize them for, don't be a hypocrite. Don't just go, oh, that's my guy and she deserved. No, she didn't. From what we can see anyway. And even so, if there was something she did, I mean, just privately, you have a relationship with her, you did. So anyway, I want to point that out and I want to reiterate this person right here, Adrian Ross, okay, is not going to just speak what other people want her to speak. And I'm not just going to follow blindly and never issue a criticism. I will praise you when you need to be praised, but I will point out things that need to be pointed out as well, because I can. I hope you can also. All right. So now that that's behind us, I want to remind you that next week is the 100th episode of the Adrian Ross show. I'm excited about that. And I hope you will be tuned in. But this one is not over because I told you we have co-founder of African American Conservatives and she's back with me so that we can follow up on where we left off last time. All right, so here we go. Marie, welcome back to the Adrian Ross show. Thank you so much for having me back. Yes, I'm glad you dropped in because you were you were with us just a couple of weeks ago. Yes. And as I was already telling the listeners, reminding the listeners, we got deep into some race issues, we some race dating issues, not the least of which had to do with The View, the ladies of The View, right? And um, you're back for an update. But yes, before we get to our update, why don't we just take a, a look at what the ladies of the view said? And it's going to go right into a little bit of what you had to say uh, during our conversation. Scott, he seems to think because I made it, everyone can make it. Ignoring, again, the fact that he is the exception and not the rule. 
black Republican who believes in pulling yourself by your bootstraps, rather than to me, understanding the systemic racism that African Americans face in this country. He doesn't get it, neither does uh, Clarence. Right. And that's why they're Republicans. That really angered me be on a lot of levels. Uh, not just the bootstraps, not just the fact that he's sunny, not, you know, not all those things, but the fact that they, that sh she as a white woman knows more about being black than a black man, one, and two, the very fact that she would call a Supreme Court yes. justice, not yes. Justice Thomas, but Clarence. Mm -hmm. Affording a black man, I mean, why didn't she just call him boy and be done with it? Yeah, I mean, I know that's a terrible thing to invoke, no. and I don't do that lightly. But I'm just saying, I, it jumped out is, of me. That is just that is what she did, and she needs to hear that that's what she did. But she's here's the thing: she will never hear it. So, did that bring out stir up some of those? Oh things? yes, yes, I was there in the moment again. <laughs> yeah, you're there in the moment. All right. So the interesting thing, though, is that. Senator Tim Scott appeared on The View. Yes, he did. Which, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll reserve my thoughts on that. Let's go right into his appearance a few days ago with the ladies, <laughs> I use that term lightly, of The View. One of the things I think about, and one of the reasons why I'm on the show is because of the comments that were made, frankly, on this show, that the only way for a young African-American kid to be successful in this country is to be the exception and not the rule. That is a dangerous, offensive, disgusting message to send to our young people today, that the only way to succeed is by being the exception. I will tell you that if my life is the exception, uh, I can't imagine. But, but I can't. It is. But it's not actually. Here's here's. It's been here's 114 my, years. Yeah. So so the fact of the matter is we've had an African American president, African American uh, vice president. We've had two African Americans to be secretaries of the state. Uh, in my home city, uh, the police chief is an African American who's now running for mayor. The head of the highway patrol for South Carolina is an African American. Still exceptions. In, 19, in 1975, um, there was about 15 percent employment in the African American community for the first time in the history of the country. It's under five percent. Forty percent homelessness and 50 percent of, of, of the folks get, in our community 13 percent of the population you had a chance to ask the question i know that i've watched you on the show that you like people to be deferential and respectful so i'm going to do the that same thing true. so here's what i'm going to suggest i'm going to suggest the fact of the matter is that progress in america is palpable it can be measured in generations i look back at the fact that my grandfather born in 1921 in sally south carolina when he was on a on a sidewalk a white person was coming, he had to step off and not make eye contact. That man believed then, with some doubt now, in the goodness of America, because he believed in having faith in God, mm -hmm. faith in himself, and faith in what the future could hold for his kids, would unleash opportunities in ways that you, you cannot imagine. Every kid today can look just change the stations and see how much progress has been made in this country. ABC, NBC, CBS, ESPN, CNN, Fox News all have African-American and Hispanic hosts. So what I'm suggesting is that the yesterday's exception is today's rule. And for us to so suggest... So America has met its promise. No, of course, the, the concept of America is that we are going to become a more perfect union. But in fact, the challenges that we face 50 years ago and 60 years ago should not be the same challenges that we face today. And here's the way that you, you measure that. When my mother was born, about 10% of African Americans got a high school degree, wow. diploma. Today, it's over 90%. When you look at the income, when you look at the income success that That's we've had. That's an HBCU stat. Well, listen, HBCU staff is a good okay. one because one of the reasons why I took the funding for HBCUs to the highest level in the history of the country and then I helped make it permanent is because I believe that education is the closest thing to magic in America. So I'm about making sure that our kids have as many opportunities to succeed as possible. It's one of the reasons why I need I an opportunity to well, succeed because <laughs> I have to go to break. Oh, they're begging. They have more time, though. They're begging. They're, 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 they're coming. I'm just, I'm just getting started. I believe all. People can see the success that I've had. <laughs> Marie, your take. Oh, such a great clip. There were so many things in there. I mean, you know, um, to keep it short. But one, I noticed that Joy Behar was not there. That was the very first thing that I noticed. Uh, she was off that day. 
um, the second thing was that he did talk about his HBCU plan. I love the fact they said, well, I da 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 da. And he did. He, as I talked about the last time that you that I was here, uh, that it was $250 million per year. HBCUs had to have an allocation every year. And they put that in there permanently for mm-hmm. HBCUs. And that was really Tim Scott. Mm -hmm. So those are the two big things that stood out for me. Um, But the whole thing that he said, you know, we've had uh, one president who served two terms who's African-American. We've got an African-American vice president now. Um, The one thing that he didn't mention is Mm -hmm. that almost every Black congressperson Mm -hmm. from uh, Reconstruction through the early 1900s were republicans mm-hmm. black republicans mm-hmm. there wasn't a black democrat congressperson until, until 70 years later mm-hmm. so i think it's very telling and very interesting that you know they talk about this history and they don't even know this history because they would have said something um so it, it just it struck me that um, it really seems to be because of who he is and what his beliefs are and not because of what he espouses. As I said last time that I was here, the Justice Act, if you go and Google the Justice Act and Senator Tim Scott and read that and put somebody else's name on it, put Chuck Schumer, put any Democrat name on it, um, I bet you that thing would have passed with flying colors Mm. because there's nothing in there um, that is is objectionable and he even said hey i'll give you a super amendment anything you want to dispute we'll we'll work that out because i really want this to pass Mm -hmm. um and so it's just shocking to me uh that he's been treated the way that he has been and he was very deferential and very respectful Mm -hmm. and i saw that whoopi's pose you know the whole time where she's kind of like this Mm -hmm. almost like she's falling asleep um Mm -hmm. was a little disrespectful Mm -hmm. I, i don't know Maybe that's just me because, you know, I'm head up, but. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me give you my take on on, on this. Um, I wasn't going to mention this, but you did. I didn't see that as disrespect. I almost saw that as if she had been disarmed. She just seemed a little mild to me. Hmm. And I, I think when he, it, when the camera zoomed in, she was mentioning, he was saying that, uh, I don't, he was saying things can be measured by generations. Yeah. And then her countenance changed a little bit. I kind of felt like she was leaning in to what he was saying, but who knows with Whoopi? I, I don't, I don't know. All right. So these are some, you did a great job with the, the content of it. I, I, I have sort of different, um, I'm looking at it from a different lens. Number one, he went on the show. Yeah. And I know that there are many Republicans who would not have done that. They would have stayed as far away as they possibly could from the lion's den, or in this case, the lioness's den. They would not have gone in there. And I know that there are some who would say, we should not give them the time of day. We should not um, allow them that. that. But and, I, and we could debate that, I'm sure, all day long. But I think there's something to be said for him saying, I listened to what they said about me. Yes. And I found the comments disgusting. He used a word similar to that. I forgot exactly what he said. Offensive, but he, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he found that, that and, and he wanted to come on. I don't know. I don't know the backstory. If they gave him a call or if he said, I want to come on the show. Like you said, Behar is not there as she needed to be. Uh, you know, don't know why she wasn't there. But I do applaud him for going on the show. I really do. And then the other thing is he came on there with his facts, you know, he was reasoned, but he was passionate and he was confident about what he had to say. But at the same time, he was humorous. And I like that too, especially because Republicans sort of don't have that Yes. Reputation of having that that humor like that. But he had that humor at the end. And that is disarming also because people are determined not to like you. You come in with the personality he, he did with the facts that you have willing to call them out and then laugh with them. And I think that's powerful as well. So I, I like that. Now, 
one thing though, and, and I'd like to get your feedback on this is he's saying that he's not the exception. He's the rule. And he used, well, we've had a black, pre at least a half black president. We have, a, I guess, half black <laughs> vice president, you know, and all this stuff. But at the same time, I don't want us, and I'm not saying he's saying this, but I don't want us and I don't want them measuring success by the presidency or the vice president or the Supreme Court justice or Senator Tim Scott. We are, uh, we have success, as he said too, the graduation rate is higher. You know, we've got people who are, who uh, whether they went to college or not, they are working hard. I don't think that we should put ourselves in a position where like, well, you're one of the few black senators because we are succeeding at various levels and and I and I think that that that's worth um worth stating you know and that's well, absolutely yeah. well absolutely because he is a big believer in black entrepreneurship he's mm -hmm. done a lot of things with enterprise zones and those sorts of things mm -hmm. um in the I mentioned the platinum plan the last time I was here for President Trump he helped craft some of that mm -hmm. um and it 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 uh memorialize some of the enterprise zone things that he's done for small business success uh, mm -hmm. that are black owned businesses. Mm -hmm. um, so, and the other things that you and I talked about were the fact that, you know, there's no place that we cannot go because mm -hmm. we want to, there's no, you know, black bathroom or white bathroom or black classroom or white classroom. We can go to any university that we want to. We can go into any business that we want to. We can get hired anywhere. So those are also measures because he talked about his grandfather having to step off off of the sidewalk sure. and yeah. not make contact exactly. uh, eye contact with a person who was white. Yeah. So, I mean, he those sorts of things, we have come quite a long way. And, and he, he came with those, with those facts. I, I loved it. Let me ask you uh, a couple questions here, maybe two or three questions, and then I, I, I'll, let, I'll let you go. If you were advising Senator Scott, I mean, uh, now you have the, you, you've seen the other end of it, but on the fore end, right? Would you have advised him to go on the view? Absolutely, I would have. You would. I might not want to ever go on the view, and I don't know. I haven't been asked, so you know, it, it mm -hmm. all depends. And if I were, and what the circumstances were. But here's the thing: mm -hmm. Senator Scott is running for the presidency of the United States of America, mm -hmm. and as a number of candidates on both sides of the aisle have said in the presidential debates and in other formats, they've said, "I'm not just going to be the president for." white America, black America, left America, right America. I'm going to be the president for all of America. Mm -hmm. And so the demographic uh, that The View represents, and as you and I had discussed, you know, a lot of people are afraid to have nuanced conversations about race. They mm -hmm. refuse to discuss it because you, we're victims, right? And, and that's the yeah. button that we push every time we just play it on loop. And so for him to be, as you said, confident, reasoned, have his facts, be humorous, and to go out there and, and, and expose the Republican Party to uh, people who don't traditionally maybe vote that way, mm -hmm. um, I think was courageous. And he needed to do that if he hopes to win, because as President Trump did in his winning strategy, he pulled a number of people from the Democrat Party mm -hmm. uh, to vote for him because okay. his policies were nuanced and reasoned. And uh, I think that th they will find the very same thing with Senator Scott. I'm not sure if everyone could go on there, though. No, I'm not no. so sure. <laughs> you know, I, I, I might advise some <laughs> not, not to go. And I won't yeah. name any people, you know. Um, but anyway, do you think he changed any minds at that table, though? I don't know if he changed any minds at that table in terms of voting for him. Um, I did see Sonny's face 
however, when he called her out about keep continuing <laughs> to interrupt him, she yeah. smiled and it was kind of an interesting smile. It wasn't um, an ingratiating smile or just a uh, uh, get this guy away, hurry kind of mm -hmm. smile. She actually was, you know, you, you he said, I've watched your show and I know that you da 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 da. And yeah. so she agreed that that is actually <laughs> how she comports herself. Yeah. So I think he won some points there with that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I think that the way that he conducted himself and like what you said, that there's not a lot of people that might go on there after being treated and discussed yeah. the way that he was discussed. Yeah. Um, uh, and it was disgusting and mm -hmm. it was rude and, you know, reprehensible the way that they did that. So for him to do that, I think showed a lot of grace. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think what we need to do as Christians. I think that's what we need to do as, uh, conservatives. We need to show what other people do not. I mean, as we're recording this, there've been some things, um, with a Antifa and, uh, mob behavior and uh, persecuting people for the beliefs that they have. And so for him to go on there and show grace and humor and actually treat them like they had sense, yeah. uh, I think was, was very telling. And yeah. I, I applaud him for doing that. Yeah. I think it That's was good. good. That's good. I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you this. You might say that's an unfair question because I know you know him. I do. Can he win? You know, it's, there are a lot of people that I believe after President Trump was in office are kind of on the I'm Trump until I die, no matter what bandwagon. Mm -hmm. um, and I still see a lot of that online. And I don't know that they're willing to give grace to another candidate. Um, you know, it's not his time. It's not his time right now. He needs to wait. Um, and so I, I really don't know, but I think that for Senator Scott to mm -hmm. see an opportunity, um, you know, I, I believe that if people give him an opportunity and listen to him, he's, he's declaring pretty early on. I yeah. don't know what numbers he has, but I do know he had an exploratory committee. And I know having worked on presidential campaigns behind the scenes and having worked on senatorial campaigns behind the scenes, I know that there's a fair amount of polling that mm -hmm. goes into place because there's money that you raise during mm -hmm. those exploratory right. campaigns. And so I don't think they'd throw that money away lightly if they didn't feel like they had some sort of, and even if it's not now, you have to realize Mm -hmm. Sometimes these presidential campaigns aren't necessarily running for president in that cycle. It's to get people used to seeing you in the presidential light. So Absolutely. if he can't win this one, maybe it's next time or the time after that. But getting people to see him in that light has value also. Mm -hmm. Well, we will find out how things go for now. Former President Trump is well ahead of everyone. More people are jumping in. Some of them, I have to say, I'm wondering why. I totally agree with you. And I have said many times um, that there are times when people run and they're not running for now. Or let me, let me put it this way. I have heard people say at times, I've heard people mock people who say, I feel that the Lord has called me to this. And people have often judged that by whether they have won or whether they have lost. Yeah. And I've said many times that you can be called to do something because God doesn't necessarily see winning as we see winning. Sometimes you're called to run because there's a platform and a message that you have to share and he's going to use that. So just because you lost doesn't mean that you haven't been obedient, really heard from the Lord and that you're obedient. But then there are others I look at, I, you know, and I'm just thinking, what are you doing? You know, but time will tell. It, it's relatively early, whether they close that gap there and, and catch up to, to uh, uh, former President Trump, how many more people are coming in, we don't know. But um, it should be exciting, shouldn't it? <laughs> I think so. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yes. I thank you so much for joining me, giving me your take on this. And um, I'm sure we'll have you back at some point, Marie. Thank you. Thank you. All right. God bless you.
God bless. Okay, that'll do it for this episode of the Adrian Ross Show. Be sure to check out the show notes. You'll find links in the show notes. So check that out. And again, make sure that you subscribe, that you like, and hey, also leave a rating and a review on the podcast platforms. Go to adrianross.substack.com and subscribe. But also, there is the BMG Network. This is a product of the BMG Network. If you haven't visited the bmgnetwork.com and checked out the other podcasters there, you're missing out. So go there. We are engaging, enlightening, informative, and yes, entertaining. The BMG Network.com. Com. Be sure to subscribe, be sure to like, be sure to comment, be sure to share. And again, I need your support on my Substack. Not only do I sit here and talk, but I'm a writer and I'm writing the truth and we need more truth tellers out there and you can help me do it. All right. So check it out. I will catch you on the next episode of the Adrian Ross show, which will be what? The 100th episode of the show. So tune in. All right. Catch you next time. God bless you abundantly.